Mr. Sahab together did the uh, chant that mantra. Tava katha mritam, tapta jeevanam, kavi bhi reeditam, kalma shapaham, sravana mangalam, srimadatatam, bhuvigranti ye, bhuridajana, and uh, the, we all read up to this when Sri Ma he met Sri Ramakrishna and then he was wondering who is this holy person, holy man, so serene. He got attracted and he went out to see the temple and once again came back. Here Sri Ma is coming back and then he is talking with the when he came back he saw the door is ajar and there is a lady standing over there. Sri Ma asked him can I enter because that is the custom uh, of the educated people. Unannounced one should not enter. This we discussed in our last class. So when he entered and he saw the Sri Ramakrishna in a different mood, little earlier he saw him talking with people. Now he saw him, he is just answering some questions, but at the same time his mind is reaching somewhere higher. And then Afterwards, Sri Ramakrishna is asking, where do you live? What is your occupation? Why have you come to Varanadi? These three questions. He was wanted to, Sri Ramakrishna wanted to know in details about Sri Ma, Master Masha. And this is very, very surprising because Sri Ramakrishna, it was not his uh, characteristics we can say to inquire about people whoever came he talked with them that's all but here in fine he is taking all information about master Moshe here master Moshe replied and seeing that he is absent-minded to some extent master Moshe thought that maybe Sri Ram Krishna wants to perform meditation, prayer, etc. He was not understanding the, how much advanced soul that he is meeting. That was the first time. So he said, perhaps you want to perform your evening devotions. In that case, may we take our leave? Sri Ramakrishna still in ecstasy. No, evening devotion? No, it is not exactly that. Very ordinary conversation, but it has a deep meaning. The, uh, last time when we met the last class, we were discussing about the story of Sri Ramakrishna. That one later, one person lost his later, afterwards came to know about, got that later back, found that later, and then he found that what is written over there and perform in that way. That is, that way when a person is reaching the goal, you don't need other things. That we find in the life of Sri Ramakrishna. Then still, after a while, little conversation, he saluted the master and took his leave. Then in a very simple way, Sri Ramakrishna said, calm again. This is a wonderful invitation, come again. The, when he is asking a person, come again, here we can go back to the life of Sri Ramakrishna. The God is giving call to the devoted people. 
ও ই হোয়ার ইউ আর কাম উনি তোরা কে কোথায় আছিস আর ফ্রম দ্য রুট টপ অফ দ্য কুটি বাড়ি দোজ হু হ্যাভ ভিজিটেড দ্য দক্ষিণ এশিয়া দে ক্যান আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ফ্রম দ্যাট রুট টপ হি ইউজ টু কল দ্য পিপল ফেসিং টুয়ার্ডস দ্য গঙ্গা অ্যান্ড দ্য আদার সাইড অফ দ্য গঙ্গা ইজ দ্য সিটি অফ ক্যালকাটা as if calling those people where you are come to me god is giving this call eternally but very very few people they can hear it majority of the people don't they don't listen the call of god because they are all busy busy with majority of the people they are busy to earn and somehow to survive somehow to live those is not having those problem they are also having some other desire name fame all these things in the society so they don't listen to the call that is constantly knock knocking the door of our heart hridaye darajate aghat shabd constantly god is knocking come back why because we have been created by him we have come out from the god and we must go back to god and then only circle will complete otherwise not and in between we will go on getting the knocks sometimes and sometimes some prizes shukha dukha shukha dukha shukha it will go on constantly ultimately when we will reach that god then only we can get the satisfaction in a, a wonderful way in the story that has been given in the upanishad dua suparna sayuja sakhay as a bird two birds they are having the same plumage one bird is jumping from this branch to that branch and the speaking this fruit and that fruit sometimes sweet sometimes bitter experiencing the sukha and dukha experiencing the bitterness and the happiness and continuously moving on and on and slowly slowly jumping upward 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 suddenly this bird of the lower branch it saw a same type of bird of the same plumage sitting on the upper branch quiet contented this given this story the upanishad wants to say the same soul those who are tormenting over there they are also the same soul holy soul only problem is they do not understand what to do they are thinking if we purchase a car we will be happy thinking if we construct a home we will be happy thinking if we go over there we will be happy and like this way constantly going on on and on then ultimately when they see someone they wonder how he is so calm and this is the experience we find in the life of siddharth as a he was a prince he came out once he saw so many uh things passing on one person he is going he is talking on his uh stick the old man and one person is suffering another is dead and he was going on pondering am i going to have this type of experiences whether my wife also had the same whether my son will also pass through these stages he was asking question and every time he was listening the answer yes 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 then he saw a monk a sanyasi he is also a human being unperturbed when he was going as if the peace was falling from his scattering from his person then he said who is this and decided to renounce the world this story of the life of bhagavan buddha 
Siddhartha. And that teaches us that God is giving the call. Siddhartha heard it, he understood it and responded to it. And Siddhartha transformed to Buddha. Buddha means knowledge, a knowledge one, knowledgeable one. And here again, we find many, those who are majority of the people don't hear it, can't hear it, because so are so busy, they are so busy. One Swami, he was long out, not coming to meet the Holy Mother, Ma Sarada Muni Devi. I don't like to call Holy Mother, Mother is always holy. Why should I unnecessarily put it holy? All of our mothers are holy and the Divine Mother, of course, holiest of the holy. Now, he was not coming to Mother, he was practicing tapasya and all these things, nothing happened. Then he came to Mother and after offering his pranam, he said, Ma, Amake Guriyona. Don't make me round to this birth and death, death and birth, the circle of death and birth. Then mother smiled and said, Baba, how many days you were himself roaming over there, didn't look at me, never cared for me. Now it is my time that I will also do a little. So like that life goes. The moment we hear the call, then we come. There is a beautiful Bengali song. It's not actually song. These are all the prayer that comes out from the heart. The words of our heart that's coming out through the music. Shakulu kajir paai he shumai Tumare dakite paai ne I get time to perform all my duties only I don't get time to remember you remember God I don't have time to call look at the people who go and call them please come they don't have time there are so many other engagements and truly they are having them engagements but suppose you say that there is a cinema actor is coming and you are invited to go over there and can talk to him or her and can have a dinner with her or him. Do you think they will say that I have some work I cannot go? There it will be very few people, majority will jump on the idea. They will all go. Why? Because that is the attraction, worldly attraction. Rupa, Rasha, Sapta, Sparsha, Ganda, all the pipe. They're constantly drawing us out. So naturally, we don't hear the call, Avar Esho, come again. When that call was given to Sri Ma, Master Masha, Master Masha immediately, he started wondering, who is this serene looking man who is drawing me back to him? Look at the word he used drawing me back to him. <coughs> Is it possible for a man to be great without being a scholar? He was wondering. How wonderful it is. I should like to see him again. He himself said, come again. I shall go tomorrow or the day after. A type of you know, desire to meet. Meet the beloved one. Meet to someone with whom really I want to go and meet. That is. We do not love God. That's why we don't go to God. We don't like to go to God. When there are problems, then only we go to pray, to solve that problem. Otherwise not. So this is the call that God has given to everyone. And then again he is telling Pratap's brother, he was going on talking about the information. And the beauty of Sri Ramakrishna is, the moment Master Mashai came, he started talking with him as if he was knowing him for a long time. It was the first visit, this is the second visit. And the second visit when it came, where do you live? In Calcutta, sir. 
Ramakrishna, where are you staying here? I am at Varanagar, at my elder sister Ishan Kaviraj's house. See, Varanagar was not Calcutta then. Calcutta was very small, a small city. And those who have visited Calcutta, they have, must have seen that there is a trench is there. Uh, a river uh, has been uh, dividing Calcutta, protecting Calcutta. So that was up to Calcutta, Bagbaja, where mother's house is there. And after that, it was not Calcutta. Now it has been included into the Calcutta. That's why Sri Ramakrishna is asking, when Master Masha said, I am in Calcutta, then where, where you are living here? That means it is not Calcutta. Varanagar was not Calcutta, though it is a part and parcel. Now, immediately he recognized, oh, Kishan, Ishan, that means he knew that. Sri Ramakrishna, he was a religious man. Most of his time he used to deep down in his samadhi, in his meditation, but he used to keep information about the society. He used to go and visit to the people. Why? Well, he had a mission. What was that mission? To awaken people that they are not ordinary human beings, they are divine. That divinity, God himself going and visiting people asking them, talking with them, and encouraging them. Well, how is Keshav now? The second, almost second question, how is Keshav now? He was very ill. Now, he is asking this question to Master Mashai, because Master Mashai is from Calcutta. And Keshav and all others are very famous. And obviously, this natural that people will know each other. Nowadays, in this type of city life, even here in Chicago, still people are having the small, small houses, nice houses. In Calcutta and other places, there is no house. All apartments, they don't know who is there. In the next apartment, they don't care about. But previously it was not. All is to give information, and Kesha was a famous person. The, indeed, I have heard so too, but I believe he is well now. Master Mashai is replying. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, I made a vow to worship the ma mother with green coconut and sugar on Keshav's recovery. This is a habit of the uh, back in India, these people, when there will be anything, immediately they will go to God and say, if you listen to my prayer, and if it, my prayer is answered, I will come with this type of puja to you. So green coconut and sugar. Directly, if you are drinking the green coconut water, that's not good for health. So you are, you are supposed to mix a little sugar. The Sri Ramakrishna is telling the green coconut water and little sugar to Mangal. That he would offer if Keshavs get the recovery. Look at it. How much love for Keshav, concern for Keshav. And who is Keshav? He's a leader of Brahma Samaj, who were denouncing so our Hindu religion and Sanatana Dharma. Even then, Sri Ramakrishna is so much concerned. And there, there was a person, a Colonel Alcott. He was the only American at that time in India. Britishers were there, Americans were not there in India. Shami Vivekananda came to know about him. He went all the way to meet him when he decided to come to America so that at least he gives a letter to someone who will be receiving him naturally in an unknown place we are going. If we get someone's address or some support, what is it? A great help. You know what he said, Captain Alcott? If you convert into my faith, then only I will support you. Otherwise, no. When Shamiji declined, how can I? Then afterwards, that Colonel Alcott wrote to his friends over here, let the devil die in hunger and cold. Vivekananda came to know about it and said, 
this table is not bought to do like that, <laughs> die like that. I am going to do something. So like this way, people that think the narrow-minded, he was a religious person. But at the same time, his mind was so narrow. And here is another person, religious person, Sri Ramakrishna, who is praying to his own goddess, the Ishta Devi, for the recovery of one who was not supporting his own religion, own faith, own path. So that's why he is telling. And then he is telling, sometime in the early hours of the morning, I will wake up and pray to her, Mother, please make Keshav well again. If Keshav doesn't leave, whom shall I talk with when I go to Calcutta? So Keshav was of that height. And Sri Ramakrishna used to uh, get joy in his company because he could talk to him. Suppose a scientist, suppose a doctor, suppose a writer, suppose someone of that, if he gets that type of temperament, then only he can become friend. Otherwise, they can talk, but after 10 15 minutes, it will be tired. They can't understand, they can't converse each other. So, Keshav was of that height. And so it was that I resolved to offer her green coconut and sugar. Tell me, do you know of a certain Mr. Cook who has come to Calcutta? He is inquiring from Master Marshall. Majority of the people, if they are religious people, they will never inquire about anything. They will simply going like this, no, I don't know him, who is he? Unconcerned about the society. Sri Ramakrishna want, never wanting this type of devotees. They must be concerned about others also. They must give information. Active, always, at the same time, unattached. So look at these questions he is asking about the all then one gentleman he told Swamiji, you need not to bother about all these things. You only simply sit in the temple, do puja, all other things we will do. I told I'm sorry. I cannot sit constantly in the, before Thakur and do puja. If you like, you can do that. I will do your job also. <laughs> because ours is totally different type of temperament. We like to go and see and mix. And mothers also used to keep a lot of information. Swamiji also knew so many people. But at the same time, look at their, their behavior unattached. They know, but won't interfere. So he is inquiring from the master Masha how much he know and what type of person he is. It, is it true that he is giving lectures? Once Keshav took me on a steamer and this Mr. Cook too was in the party. And then master M, yes sir, I have heard something like that. But I have never been to his lectures. I don't know much about him. Master Moshe was an ordinary teacher. So naturally, Mr. Cook and Keshav, and they're all high society people. So obviously, Master Moshe was telling them, I, I have heard about them, but I was not in their company. Sri Ramakrishna changed the topic. Look over here. Pratap's brother came here. He stayed a few days. He had nothing to do and said he wanted to leave here. I came to know that he had left his wife and children with his father-in-law. He has a whole brood of them. So I took him to task. Just fancy. He is the father of so many children. Will people from the neighborhood feed them and bring them up? He isn't even ashamed that someone else is feeding his wife and children and that they have been left at his father-in-law's house. I scolded him very hard. Look at the sentence, the word he's using. I scolded him very hard and asked him to look for a job. Then he was willing to leave here. Swadharma. When you are married, you have to look after your family. That is the wonderful way the religion is taught by Sri Ramakrishna. If we look at the Buddhist movement, the 
Bhagavan Buddha never wanted it. But afterwards, the movement as such. This world is illusory. Dukkha Moy is full of pain and misery. And it has a cause, the misery has a cause, a Dukkha Karunaj. And then from this misery, you can also get the liberation. And there is a way to get the liberation. These are the four Arya Chakta Ari. They, 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 in Buddhism, they say these are the four truths. That's true. But for whom? This world is nothing but illusory, misery, full of misery. For whom? Those who have understood it. Not for all. Those who have not understood it, if you call them forcefully, then what happened? You will not only become uh, just behaving, acting, but at the same time, you will be re reducing your ideology also. And that is what has happened in the Buddhism. Thousands of people is to join in the monastery, just putting on the uh, monks, Girl will do? No, it is the mind only. It is your temperament, it is your thought. That has to be changed. So here, Sri Ramakrishna doing just opposite. Brother of Pratap, someone Pratap was there. And Sri Ramakrishna is quoting and immediately telling to Sri Mom. Why suddenly, totally unknown person, why he is talking like this? Afterwards, we will know. Sri Mo is not unknown to Sri Ramakrishna. That we will know afterwards. Here Sri Ramakrishna is telling that I scolded him. And similarly, when he was Krishna, he scolded Arjuna also. Klaibhyam masmagam opart. Naitatta You are a Kshatriya. You are a soldier. You are supposed to perform this type of duties. And you say that I won't, I will do this and I will do that, I will beg? No. I think all of you who have read the life of Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother, there's a wonderful two things he said. To Mother, he said, never stretch your hand before anyone like this. Never in this form, begging, asking help to no one. Rather, if it is possible, try to give someone a shot like this, put the hand in this way and try to give, try to help, but never be, because householders should not be, should not ask things from others. Why? Because his self-confidence will be lost. He will be depending on others. And same Sri Ramakrishna, he said to Swami Vivekananda, go and beg from each house. Look at it. It is the divine duty of the sannyasins. They should not earn by doing some business or in job and all these things. They will go to different houses, ask a little from each house. Madhukari, like the bee, it goes to all flowers. Take a little honey and goes. Similarly, a monk will go to different houses, to different people, approach to different people and collect fund from that and he will do some job, some work which will be beneficial for the society. Sometimes we find then that some of the organizations getting a lot of support from the devotees and they are creating huge wonderful architectural beauty and all those things. It's not for the monks. That's for the kings. That's for the businessmen. That's for the rich people of the society. Monks, what they should do? They should try to find out the people who are at the bottom of the society. They should go and with every farthing that they earn, should try to help them because there are living gods waiting over there for his service, for his job, for his puja. And that is the thing Sri Ramakrishna is teaching here. And then we find this Master Mahasharat, 
this after the sadharma he is asking master mushi some questions that is the unique part of this kathamrita vachanamrita here he is asking are you married this is a question very embarrassing for the people because in those days people used to get married in 15 16 years boys when they are 15 16 years they used to get married engaged men engagement will be there not that immediately they will be living together husband wife wife may be 6 years 7 years old and uh, husband may be 12 16 15 like that they will be engaged and then afterwards when they are grown up then he himself also did same now he are you married then yes sir he is not hesitating he is the yes sir sri ram krishna with a shudder he is telling oh ramla alas he is married <laughs> ramla is a, is a, you know was nephew <coughs> he is just somewhere nearby maybe he was there and calling him sri ram krishna is very sad you can say when he heart is answer he himself is married ramlal was also married then why he is behaving like this like one guilty of a terrible offense the sri mai is writing aim sat motionless his eyes fixed on the ground he was a very soft kind of a person in those days he was emi he was a master degree even then he was just feeling guilty he said to himself is it such a wicked thing to marry this is the first time he is getting this type of question the master continued have you any children this time aim could hear the beating of his own heart <laughs> then he whispered in a trembling voice he couldn't pronounce it properly he was very as low voice as possible he was telling yes sir i have children <coughs> very sadly sri ram krishna said ah me he even has children <laughs> tas rebuke aim sat speechless his pride had received a blow aim was thinking he knew everything of life because he was an educated man he was a head master a principal of a school after a few minutes sri ram krishna looked at him kindly and said this is very important why he is asking this question and replying in this manner then he is disclosing you see you have certain good signs i know them by looking at persons for it his eyes and so on the wonderful knowledge he was knowing it's called samudra vidya there is a type of knowledge that people can understand by seeing the forehead and uh, different features and sometimes afterwards will come to know and you know all who has read the life of sri ramakrishna the sometimes he will be owing the hand from the finger at to this elbow he will be owing the hand and then he can understand he could understand what type of person he is what type of mentality so if we try it will be impossible because this is a special type of knowledge now this how sri ram krishna could know there are so many arguments are there here actually afterwards we will see in one play sri ram krishna is telling to sri ma ami tomake chaitanya dale dekhechi i have seen you in the group of chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu was 500 years years before 500 years before chaitanya mahaprabhu was there how could sri ram krishna see chaitanya mahaprabhu so naturally people will wonder and not only chaitanya mahaprabhu in his groups who all these people that they were there he must be looking at us also and remembering us <laughs> that these people are coming and listening to kathamrita is okay 
And we'll find it is really true. It's not joke. And the God eyes, if you see Jagannatha, at the center of India he is sitting. His name is Jagannatha. Jagat means the universe. It's not the world. Universe. Natha means the creator, the Lord. And very peculiarly, this God is not having the hands. He is not having the legs. He is only having two big eyes without any eyelid. Very peculiar. As we grow in that situation, we don't feel anything. But suddenly, if some foreigners will go and see the image of Jagannatha, they'll wonder how it is. A, a peculiar type of image, not having the hands, not having the legs, only to be guys. Why? Because God is all pervading everywhere. To make ordinary people understand it, many of the people who are the worshipper of Jagannatha, they don't know it. And perhaps they won't like to believe it also because they like to live in that stories. And stories are nothing but to attract the ordinary people and then the truth is tad ejati tannoyati tad dure tad antike tad antarasya sarvasya tad u sarvasyasya vayata In Upanishad it says that it is not he or she it is that why that because the atman has no gender it is the consciousness all pervading in, in distance in near inside outside everywhere and that is why the god is the form of the god it doesn't need any legs because we need the legs to go from here to there. But God doesn't. It's already there. We need the hands to perform some work. It doesn't. Because only thinking is sufficient. But he's having two big eyes without any eyelid. Why? The constantly observing Shakshi. Constantly seeing who is doing what. That's called Karma Pala theory comes through this. And here, the Master Moshe, uh, the moment he saw, he could understand. Not only that, he could understand by seeing the Narendra He told, you are the God who has come down to help the human being. Not in himself was doubting. The, what is it? Then he said, you know, you are having 18 such power. Only with one that power, Keshav is becoming so popular and powerful. Hating such power is there within you. He said, sir, please don't say all this thing. I know you love me, but that does, doesn't mean you have to exaggerate so much. People will laugh. Keshav is such a person and I am such a little. Thakur told what to do. I am not telling. This mother forcing me to do, asking me to say. So that afterwards it became so true. So that's why he could see when he saw the Rakhal Maharaj, Brahmananda Ji, immediately understood that he was the com in the company of Sri Krishna. Baburam Maharaj, he was a part of Sri Radha, pure. So that is the thing he could immediately see and how it is. The same doubt also came in the mind of Arjuna. When Lord Krishna said, Imam Vibhashwate Yogam Pratvan Aham Abhayam. See this, I imparted this immortal yoga to Vivaswan. Arjuna said, how it is possible? You were, you and me of almost the same age. Now you are telling that you told to Surya, Vivaswan, how it is possible? Thousands of years before he was there existing. Then, the way that he expressed a doubt, Sri Krishna is replying, Bahuni me vati tani, Bahuni me vati tani, Janmani tava charjana, 
Hey Arjuna, you and me, so many times we have taken birth. But Tanyaham Veda Sarvani, Veda means not knowledge, no. Tani Aham, Aham means I know all those, but you don't understand, you don't remember it. Not Tuam Veda Parantapa. At the last, he is using that Parantapa. You are a ferocious fighter, even then, you do not remember it. Now he is not addressing as Arjuna, he is telling Parantapa. Even then, you do not understand and know it. So this is, then naturally, God has created us. We are not the products of blind chance. We are highly intelligent creations. Therefore, it stands to reason that some great intelligence must have created us. And we call that intelligence as God. Certainly God would not bring us with so many inequalities, good and bad. When God has created us, then how it is that so many good and bad is there? Every good or bad qualities we have is the heritage of the past. It's the law of karma. Why should we do good work? There it is coming. In Chandaka Upanishad, in different Upanishads, in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavata, almost in every scriptural books we find this. In Chandaka Upanishad, they have used as two words. One is Ramaniya Charana. Ramaniya Acharana. Ramaniya Charana, performers of meritorious deeds. Performers of meritorious deeds. Now there are some people, they think that if we kill hundreds of people by bomb blast, we are doing meritorious deeds. Are they? No. They are not human beings at all. Because they don't have their own thinking. If you really like to fight, fight with the soldiers. If you really like to show your anger, courage and all this, go to those people who are really encounter, can encounter with you. Why do these ladies, the children and when they are totally unaware? They are enjoying over there and suddenly the bomb blast and all these things. Why? So this is the thing, but they are doing it not as a just activity that I'm, you know, it's the war going on and I'm doing to, uh, doing this type of war to disturb the other country, enemy country. No, no, not like that, as a religious work. So that is the wrong thing. That's why it is telling Ramaniya Acharana. What is that Ramaniya Acharana? Not hurting anyone. Some other time in details we will discuss. In Bhagavad Gita, in so many words they are telling which are the good words. Not through words you should hurt anyone. Holy Mother also telling our Ma Sarda Devi. That you should not hurt anyone with your words also. That is the thing. I am really wondering over here, whatever may be, may not be from the heart, maybe only from the lips, but still people are so courteous. The moment you are looking at someone, if there is any eye contact, unknown people, they will smile at least. In our places, we never bother to smile. Why do we smile? Rather, we will simply look at him in such a way, <laughs> why you are looking at me? Like that. And who is this new fellow? Here, people, they are curious, they like to see, but at the same time, the moment the eye contact, immediately smiling at least totally unknown. Then you will, when they are talking and helping in a very, very courteous way, that is the human quality we must behave, behavior. And that we should, must know. This is Ramaniya Acharana and another is Kopua. Kopua Acharana. What is that? Performance of bad deeds. 
Something is there in our body which passes through body after body. Basamsi jinnani yatha vihaya. The famous sloka of Bhagavad Gita in the second chapter. Navani grinnati naroparani tatha sharirani vihaya jinnani anyani sanyati navani dehi. It's as easy as that. When the garments become old, the people they leave it and purchase the new. And similarly, when this body becomes old, the one who is residing within it, it leaves it as an old used garment. Look at it. Just like an old used garment, they leave it. Similarly, the body also, one who is living within this, who is that? Jivatma is a part and parcel of Paramatma. This is the philosophy of the old ancient tradition of India. So this you can understand. And then Swami Vivekananda, his life after death in that lecture, he is telling, the idea of re reincarnation is most essential for the moral well-being of human race. There are objections to this theory. What is that objection? First and foremost objection by the very prominent philosophers. Why do we not remember our past? Suppose we are having the again and again revert. Why we are not remembering it? Then Swamiji gave a long answer to it. Sometime making some... Then here Swamiji is telling, if only criteria is to remember. Do you remember your uh, babyhood days? None of us. The babyhood days when we were on the lap of our mother, what we used to do, how we used to eat, and who took care, do you any remember? Does it mean, as because we cannot remember the babyhood days, that there was no babyhood in our life? Similarly, this also, this is Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda, Ma Sharada Mani Devi in the present age, they are accepting. And this also attached to it, law of karma. Sri Ramakrishna said, he who was Rama, he who was Krishna in this body as Sri Ramakrishna. And when that too, when only his disciple Narendra was thinking and he was in the excruciating pain. He was suffering over there and he was thinking at this moment if he can say that he is God, I will believe. So many times he has taken the examination and this time also again examine. And Thakur, as they call, passed that exam. How? By telling this immediately read the mind, immediately replied, I replied in a very wonderful way. He who was Rama, who was Krishna is this, in this body as Sri Rama Krishna. Again and again the God is taking the form of different name and form to help the human being. Ma Sarada Mani Devi also, when she went to Rameshwara, in Rameshwara, I think many of you have already visited, there is a Shiva Linga made by sand, that was made by Sita. Ram wanted to worship Shiva because he has killed so many people in the war. So by worshipping Shiva, he wanted to the, just perform you know, some type of performances, puja, etc. Hanuman went to bring the Shiva Linga, but he was late. So Rama thought, what to do? Then Ma Sita, she made a Shiva Linga by sand only and Ramachandra performed puja over that. The sand Linga, that uh, image still there, they have kept it. Mother Sardamani Devi went over there, saw it and then she was soliloquizing, Jamonti Rikhigachi 
তেমনটি আছে অ্যাজ এ কেপটিক সেম ওয়ে ইট ইস স্টিল দেয়ার সো ওয়েন আই ওয়েন্ট টু ওয়ার দেয়ার ওয়েন আই স আই ওয়াজ ওয়ান্ডারিং দিস ফ্রম রামচন্দ্র অ্যান্ড ত্রেতা ইউগ অফ দ্য সেম থিং ইস দেয়ার ইফ ইউ ডোন্ট বিলিভ ইউ ডোন্ট বিলিভ বাট ইফ ইউ বিলিভ ইট so natural it is wonderful thing and then also when in vrindavana mother went to vrindavan she felt that she is radha so this we also sometimes when we looking at someone immediately we will think oh i have seen you somewhere where from shami ji is uh, giving the argument again sometime when we see something immediately understand this is this how it is because it is in our memory otherwise how it come how can you remember it our behavior as a human child our behavior as a calf our behavior as a kitten are all different why because they are born with some memory and that proves the rebirth the moment with the rebirth comes to naturally it comes karma phala the work otherwise why they uh, uh, there so many differences divergence that we find between man and man is their power proves the theory of reincarnation <coughs> once sri ram krishna went to vidyasagar vidyasagar sagar means ocean he was such a learned person he got that certificate vidya sagar he is the a person of knowledge ocean of knowledge and then he also that vidya sagar say do you think the human being are all different and the sri ma sri ramakrishna who never attended the school he immediately said why then i have come to meet you have you grown some horns on your head no because you are different from other people why they are different karma phala the people are good and bad because of their karma phala and naturally the rebirth counterparts the law of karma rebirth theory reincarnation theory the naturally supports the karma phala theory and in the karma phala i want today i want to explain the whole thing they say that there are some people who are really very good all through their life what will happen to them after the death and <clears throat> they have not realized the brahman the ultimate goal they have not realized but all through their life they have practiced high spiritual values what will happen to them they will go to brahma loka very near uh, to liberation this brahma loka those who are going from there if they are again they are performing the good action they will be liberated mukti but even then there are chances when you go to heaven those who go to heaven after performing good deeds is it for eternal no in kathopanishad they say nakashya prishthate nakash means in the heaven nakash prishthate sukrite anubhutve imam lokam hinataram bavishanti even with your good deeds if you are reaching the heaven but in the heaven also if you are not continuing with that then what happened like we keep lot of money in the bank and then go on spending and then Uh, credit card debit card and all those things goes on 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 then suddenly what will happen then one day one letter will come from the bank uh, it's not there and you have taken so much of money we are going to take out your whatever property you are having similarly nakashya prishthate sukriti anubhutve whatever good deeds that you have you are after performing all those things you may come on this you must have to come on this or you may go down here in brahma loka and those 
mediocre, we can say, mediocre type. They do good, little, and also bad, and like that. They have a desire to be good, and they're trying to be good, and all that. They go to Chandra Loka. And this from the Chandra Loka, once again, they come back to this earth. Once again, they get the human form, human birth. Once again, they are given the opportunity to perform good works. And slowly, slowly, step by step, to go to Brahma Loka, then to Mukti. And third group, they do perform forbidden action. What is a forbidden action? We know in the law of every country, there are forbidden things. You should not do this, you should not do that. If you are doing, you will be punished like this and that. Similarly, in the spiritual life also, the forbidden actions are there. If you are performing like that, then what will happen? You may, some human bodies you have to leave. Like the dog, cat, animals, and like that only some human body you may have to leave. Very peculiarly you will see some of the dogs and cats and this type of pets. They love to live in the temple. There was a dog, Swamiji used to love, Swami Vivekananda. And one day he became angry with the dog. Then he asked uh, some people, take the dog, cross the Ganga and leave it in the Calcutta, on that other side of the Ganga. And they left that. The dog was taken by boat and it was left over there. When they came back, after some time they found it has swum across the whole Ganga and once again sitting in that place and looking at Swami Vivekananda. It won't leave. Then afterward it so happened when it died, it felt they left, I think somewhere they kept the body, but it, it went to the Ganga. And in the web tide it came once again and then its body was stuck at the Belur Mot area. It was there. So how can we explain it? It may be a, just accident, but it must be something that was there. And some of the cats also, they will be constantly with the temple. They can go to other neighborhood, they won't. They will be in the temple or going around. Like this, there are there subhuman bodies. Maybe they were in the previous life, they were human beings. They made some mistakes, heinous work. That's why in this life they have come down. So one must be very, very careful about one's action. And finally, extremely vile actions. What happened to them? Many birds as insignificant creatures like the mosquito and all others. They'll be leaving again, 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 and again. No one, as you sow, so you reap. Each action has its equal and opposite reaction, as they, they say in the science. Similarly, in our action also, that it is good action of Master Masha that he came in contact with Sri Ramakrishna. And when, when he was having dispassion about the family life, about his, the, he was not at all attached to that life. He wanted to go away from there. Then he came in contact with God himself. And why God was wondering? Because afterwards he said, you had so many good qualities. If you were not bound by your worldly duties, I could use you, your all these qualities for spreading the message of God. When he came to know about Swami Vivekananda, that he may get married because one very rich person, he was negotiating with his parents, Narendranath's parents, and they are very rich and offering that if Narendranath is marrying that girl, then they will give all the expenditure for him to go to London and to study law over there, to become a barrister. And Thakur, the moment he heard, he ran to Mother Kali and prayed to Mother Kali, Ma, okay, Badhishni, 
Mother, don't bound him because I need him to work. Mother is Sri Ramakrishna and God is Sri Ramakrishna. At the Sri Ram, again the Sri Ramakrishna is behaving in this way. Why? These are all to understand. Sometimes the people will be talking like this. Why? What is there? Sri Ramakrishna was married. Why you people not marry? So that is totally different. The temperament, the mentality, the moment you are attached with anything. And every evening as we pray to Thakur, Taji, renouncing what? Jati, Kula and Maan. These are the three words. The Jati Garva, you know I belong to the such and such. And naturally it leaves like that. Impression will be there. You are bound by that. It's very, very subtle. If one starts thinking that I am so and so and so and so, except a Jati Kula family. Those who are having good families, sometimes they will be going on telling, my father was so and so and this and, and all people will say, see, look at him. Such a rich person's son. He has become mom. And naturally they will bring all good things for me. <laughs> so that's not good. Taji, Jati, Kula and Maan. Maan means Ahamkar. You may come to Thakur, but unless and until we understand through that prayer, Swami Vivekananda, who was none other than Sri Ramakrishna himself in that form, is teaching us every evening we must pray and pray understanding the words of the songs. Otherwise, entertainment. We are singing the song, if you go to Belurmot, there will be two people, Brahmacharyans sitting in both sides. They are playing that uh, um, big accordion sort of things and the harmonium, tabla and so many musical instruments will be there. Excellent music. If you like to hear music, that is the music. But if you go every word when you are praying, the very first word, it is Khandana Bhava Bandhana. Khandana means please cut the bondage of the worldliness. And what is the worldliness? These Jati Kula Mana. So sometimes people are, they come and say, Swamiji, are you Bengali? And I don't know. <laughs> you better guess. And this is the thing that one devotee should not do. I'm telling you, if you are really like to become the devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, please keep in mind, broad mind. Anyone takes the Sri Ramakrishna name, he is my guru. Swami Vivekananda is telling, if anyone is taking the name of Sri Ramakrishna, I am the servant of his servant. And sometimes he says, servants of his servants of his servant. Why? Because unless and until that humbleness is there, that broadness is there, you can never reach the this God. He looks so simple, but very difficult to reach. Very, very difficult. Very simple. You need not to do anything. Only understand two things. Who are you and who am I? What is our relation? That's what we'll do. People are so happy. Oh, only this much. That we know. No, it's very difficult. So that is the reason in the Panchama Veda, in the pages of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Katha Amrita, we will find again and again, these things will be reminded to us so that we get the knowledge. And about that knowledge again, Master Masha will get a rebuke <laughs> from the Master Sri Ramakrishna. Up to this, now please, Change your the other side of the paper, the Pranama Mantra, <coughs> composed by Swami Avedananda Ji Maharaj. We will chant it. A look at the words, if you can understand the Sanskrit word, the profoundity of Sri Ramakrishna. Niranjanam Nityam. Niranjanam Nityam. Anantarupam, Anantarupam, 